By the mid-1920s, audiences were blasé about stunt work. They imagined it was all perfectly safe. They expected stunts which patently could not be faked, in particular violent air crashes. The man most in demand for this kind of work was Dick Grace, who kept this unique role of film, showing the best of his stunts and those which didn't quite come off. The aviation epic, Wings, involved the best flyers the Air Corps could produce, yet the stunt work was still entrusted to Dick Grace. It nearly ended his career. Dick could do anything in a flying thing. And in Wings, I'll never forget, he did this tremendous spin into the ground and hit bum on his nose, and the plane turned over just about like that. It didn't go all the way over. We all ran over because we figured he may have got hurt, you know. Billy Wellman was there, and Bill says, you all right, Dick? Dick says, I'm okay. He said, well, come on out. So Dick undid his belt, not figuring he would hang it upside down, and run on top of his head and broke his neck. Despite his injury, Grace managed to return to stunt flying for the 1928 war film Lilac Time. He was crazy. <laughs> He was a marvelous stunt flyer. He and there were a group of them who did the stunts on lilac time and uh, in the planes, cracking them up. Colleen Moore played an inquisitive French girl on a farm used as an airfield in World War I. Dick uh, uh, came to the director and he, he had a stick and he, they walked out and he said, now, and he drew a cross in the dirt. He said, now, is this where you want me to crack up? And the cameraman and the director said, yes. Now he said, do you want me with the wings toward you or do you want exactly how the crack up was? And they told him. And he took a little saw and he began sawing this plane apart. And then he went up and came down and cracked exactly as he said. Stunt flyers were known as barnstormers. The newsreels, always looking for action, were ideal screen tests for the most daring pilots and wing walkers. The most charismatic of the show flowers was Omar Locklear. He won his reputation in the Air Corps, climbing out repeatedly onto the wings and even the axles of aircraft in mid-flight. He found such danger exhilarating. In 1919, for the newsreel cameras, he performed a plane-to-plane -plane transfer without a parachute. Locklear was hired for pictures. These, they, these, uh, this Omar Locklear was a very f popular man, very interesting man, very daring young man, and he took all the stars up, and every time he came to the studio, I succeeded very tactfully in avoiding him, you see, because I was scared to death of the eye, and I wasn't scared, but I wasn't particularly interested. I was having too much fun on Earth. So, um, he, uh, he said, he, he, he uh, stopped me in the hallway and he said, I know, you're Leatrice Joy. And I, and I knew who he was, you know, and I made like I was very weak and about to die, you see, so he wouldn't think I was too robust to take up there. But anyway, he said, you know, you're the only star, and I come on now, let's make a day of it. So 
I said, all right. So he said, right now. So I said, all right. So we went out. And this plane, of course, when you see the ones of today, if you can catapult yourself back to a little cracker box, so help me heaven, with two single seats, one in the front and one in the rear, you see. And uh, I got in this thing, and we start zooming up like that, you know. And, and I, as I said, I always controlled myself in a moment like that. And I said, now you're in it. Now enjoy it, you know, and just just be your age, you know. And I, I he made an element curve, one of those things like that, you see, and then the reverse of it and all those kind of things. And I thought I'd had enough, you see. So I uh, made some kind of gesture to him, and I did this, meaning take me down, you know. I was I was throwing in the sponge and giving up completely because I'd had enough of it. And he, he did this to me, and I thought, what are you so happy about taking me down? And all of a sudden, he zoomed up, and he went into the most daring of any of those things, the falling leaf. You go down and down and down till you practically pick buttercups, you know, and then he stops. And I, he, he ran to the back of it and he picked me up and he said, Congratulations, you're the only star with guts, Miss Joy. You're the only one who asked for the falling leaf. Yum, 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 yum. And I didn't have the courage enough to say, That was my sponge I was throwing out, you know. Locklear was particularly interested in an actress called Viola Dana. I looked at this great big handsome man and he looked at me and he said, would you like to go up with me? I said, yeah, yes, I would. I'd love it. And he had green eyes, too. And I want to tell you, those. we looked at each other, and up I went with him in one of those old Jennies. I afterwards found out, well, that was it. We, I guess we fell in love immediately. <laughs> And everything in a plane that's to be done. Loops, I've been done one day, we did something like 25 consecutive loops and spins and barrel rolls and we'd go under telegraph, uh, under, uh, between telegraph poles under the wires and chase our friends down Hollywood Boulevard if we saw them. I'd carry a bunch of old lipsticks and we'd throw, we'd, that's how low we'd fly. We'd throw them down and then you could see them look up and say, <laughs> of course, they, uh, I think they got after him, too. He left, had to leave town. He uh, hid out for about a week. Locklear continued to appear at shows around the country, keeping in touch with an anxious Viola Dana by telephone and telegram. There's nothing dangerous in the work, he insisted. I do absolutely nothing that could be called a risk of life. Everything I do is planned methodically and is absolutely safe. Fox brought him back to Hollywood to star in The Skywayman in 1920. Aerial scenes were photographed at the DeMille Airfield, next to the oil fields. He was making a picture for Fox. They were starring a minute, and um, he was uh, doing some night flying, tailspin. And he said to the director, he said, now, when I get down to the level of the oil wells, take the lights off me, the sunlight ox. Take those lights off me, and I'll know where I am. I can come out of it. And he went into the tailspin, and they never took the lights off him. And of course, he into a, an oil sump. <clears throat> I guess there was practically nothing left of him, because the, those jennies, you know, they were very fragile. I, they, Somebody picked me up at the, I started to run for the plane and somebody said, grab her, grab her and take her home. And uh, I guess I was kind of, I was just kind of crazy. I couldn't believe what had happened. Those, and, and when you're young, those things are very shocking. I don't even like to talk about it. Fox rushed the Skywayman into release and announced that a share of the profits would be given to the families of Locklear and his co-pilots, 10%. <laughs> 